Yes, it's true. Descript has a whole new timeline. Buttons are moved. Buttons are added. Buttons are hiding. There's things that have brand new names over in the sidebar. Now, personally, I like the changes. I'm liking the direction. I haven't had any problems with it. However, I know from my own experience and comments and questions that I see from my fellow Descript users, it can be incredibly frustrating. So first of all, I want you to know that you can actually turn the new timeline off for right now. If you go to your settings, there's a lot of settings in here you might not be aware of under advanced and then labs. And I think it's a good idea to come in here every once in a while and just take a peek at these things because I noticed that Sometimes I have these things on, sometimes they're not on, sometimes it's on depending on whether I'm in the actual software app versus in the browser. I happen to have the actual app open right now on my Mac. Under the labs, you can see I have my new timeline and I believe they just recently, like within the last two or three days of me recording this, they announced that the new timeline would be turned on automatically for everybody, but you could go in and turn it off for now. At some point, the new timeline will simply be the timeline and you won't be able to turn it off. So this is what it looks like new. You're going to see that we no longer have a scene rail over on the left-hand side. Our little scene thumbnails are showing up right here within the script itself. And if I expand, so down here, right here, okay, this is hard to see, but you can see right above that tiny little play button, there's a little bar, and when I hover over it, it turns into a little arrow, and I can click this and drag up to resize my timeline. It can get really big, like really big, but not only can you adjust the whole kind of like timeline space here, you can also grab the like the script so that you can actually make that a little bigger, which also helps you to kind of see sort of like a little glimpse, a little thumbnail into what exactly is uh, in that little part of the video. If I zoom in over here, I only have a couple of scenes. This is a video podcast, so it is just me talking to the camera. So I only have the one scene right here where I, my name and my Video Brand Academy logo and stuff comes in, you know, it transitions in and then it transitions out. And that's what you're seeing up here in the script as my little like thumbnail icons. And if you remember before, you would add a slash in your script or, or even down in the timeline when you wanted to add a scene. And remember, a scene is just like a change of visuals in the frame. That's what a scene is. So if you wanted to have a lower third or bring in B-roll or put a title screen or something, you had to create a scene and you did that by adding a slash. You still add a slash to create it, but it's going to turn into the little scene thumbnail and automatically it's going to prompt you to choose a layout so for example if I wanted to like use one of my layouts here um, we could do that and oh, we would have to do a little bit of fixing on that one but you get the picture so if you just click on that little thumbnail of the scene you can then choose your layout if you need to and or edit your transition. It's nice to have a little menu there for those like quick actions. So another way to add a scene is to place in the timeline, place this cursor bar, the scrubber bar, where you want to add a scene and hit the split clip option over here. And then you have that button. Now, I know uh, one of the problems that keep sort of coming up or one of the questions is like, why, why, do, why did the buttons move? <laughs> why did the buttons move? Where did they go? Like over here, we used to have select hand blade range and slip kind of those little icons like in a row. Now they're in a little drop down. And I just want to say for your own kind of like skills building with editing videos, even if you don't want to be super skilled at this, I think learning some of the keyboard shortcuts 
will be very beneficial to you in the future because, for example, I use A, um, I use the R, I use the Y, and I use the S keyboard shortcut all the time. It's not like Command S or anything. It's just S. You just put this where you want to split something. You hit S and boom, it's split. If you have your keyboard shortcuts, which you can get in my Descript cheat sheet, those haven't changed. So the buttons might have moved, but the keyboard shortcuts haven't changed for those buttons. Another really interesting thing that I noticed is we have this timeline view and we have the storyboard view. So if I hit storyboard view, it basically turns the video into just scenes. And I can see how this might come in handy if you want to like maybe rearrange. We could rearrange things here. Or if you have a lot of scenes, you have a long video, lots of things going on, then you can kind of see where you're at in your video instead of, if you notice, I just double clicked on that and it took me right to it. Maybe you'll have less of this like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling back and forth to try and find something. Or a lot of times I zoom out so that I can scroll quicker over to like the end of the video, for example. It does come in handy to have a little trackpad for your mouse instead of like a mouse mouse. I find that for editing, um, in particular, with editing in Descript, I find having a trackpad a lot more useful than a mouse. Now, the change log does mention simplified timeline indicators, comments, audio, and other elements are shown with icons placed directly in the timeline where they occur. I wasn't totally sure about this, but I did create a comment just so that I could kind of see. And there is a little comment right here. So I don't know what it would have looked like before, to be totally honest with you. We also have a new drop down menu way up on the left at the very top next to the home button. You have this view drop down, which gives you uh, an option for hiding your script, showing your edit boundaries, underlined filler words. There's some timeline settings and let's also show volume in the timeline, which is now down here. I'm still a little bummed that they don't have like actual decibels. Didn't have to eyeball it. They did make a bunch of other updates in June. There's a teleprompter. There's a better recorder for Windows and some AV sync offset tools. Oh, that's handy. Okay, let's go to our project panel. Set AV sync offset. Oh, down here. So this has been a problem for a long, long, long time. Now it looks like if you can, if you can determine how many milliseconds your audio is off from your visual, then you can adjust it. This is brilliant. I can't wait to play with that. Now, before I wrap up this video, I got to show you what they're doing with the new vibe coding underlord thing, because this is kind of neat. So right now the Descript Underlord is editing my video for me and I'm going to show you what's happening and we're going to explore this together. As of the time of this recording, the new Underlord, as it is now called, is in beta and it's something you have to turn on in your settings. If you remember a few months ago, like several months ago, it might have even been like a year ago, Descript released uh, like a whole collection of AI tools. And they called those AI tools Underlord. They're now calling the AI tools, wait for it, AI tools. Amazing, right? Like what a good name. I'm just saying that because I actually really hated the name Underlord. And so now the Underlord is this vibe coding little chat bot thing. And the AI tools are now called AI tools. We're moving in the right direction. What I wished for with the vibe coding thing that is now called Underlord, and I told, I, I expressed this in the Descript, like beta testing Discord group. If I have a whole bunch of B-roll or images in my project, I want the Underlord to know what is in those clips and be able to read my script and know what's in the clips and magically select clips of B-roll or images 
of my own projects to put in for me. They told me that was coming and I think that's what's here, but I'm a little bit skeptical. This is a, this is a still image. This is a JPEG. Now let's take a look at this because right here in the script, I'm saying, you can see my desk is positioned in the middle of this tiny room, which might look like an odd placement, but there is a method to my madness. The Underlord selected this image from my projects, which is only just named image.5421.jpg. There's no, um, you know, I didn't rename the image or give it any like metadata tags or anything like that. So it knew what was in the image just I guess by seeing what was in the image and it chose where to place it in the timeline and it did a pretty good job at doing that i have to say for the crush it on camera guide so you can see in this spot i'm saying and you can grab my updated crush it on camera guide and gear list in the description free printable guide blah 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 so it put that image in the right spot so that's cool and it did put the lower third i might have already had this heading here so i guess i just turned that into a lower third i'm not totally sure a few weeks ago i published a an entire YouTube studio, cozy YouTube studio setup video on my channel. Okay, I've been tweaking and adjusting my YouTube studio at home here in my basement for like seven years and it's almost perfect. What you didn't know if you watched that video was the entire video was voiceovered by my AI voice, completely AI generated version of my voice. And it was just like a little experiment to see how real it could sound. And um, nobody noticed. I really wanted Underlord to be able to take all that B-roll and make a video out of it, which is what I did manually. Um, it hasn't done that so far. It's just picked out a few spots. All I did was um, in my project up here at the top. So I have a bunch of files in here, a bunch of MP4 files, images, and .mov files. It hasn't pulled any of the actual video clips for B-roll. It's only just pulled the still images. What I told it was, what B-roll from my project files can I use in this project? So it thought for a little bit, it gave me the file names. These are all ping files in JPEG. So they're all still images. I really want the B-roll to be like video B-roll. So hopefully that's like the next phase, right? I'm sure it's coming. I have to say this, this vibe coding underlord tool from Descript was not something that I was expecting from Descript. I, I would have never expected or dreamed about a video editing tool, just editing something by you just like da -da 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 -da, telling it what to do. So this whole entire thing is, re it really does kind of blow my mind that, um, that this is a possible like actual use case because I, like I just can't even imagine editing videos that way. Once again, I want to remind you that I do have a Descript cheat sheet. So it's a totally free download and make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get all of the new updates and tutorials so you don't have to waste time figuring out Descript on your own.